Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.8 and Polychop Simulations SA342L Gazelle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 6, Nadir. The Nadir, which is the INS system uh, combined with a Doppler navigation system and air data computer, which is found on the Gazelle, is the primary means of navigating in this helicopter. It's, uh, it's fairly easy to operate, but its uh, main control panel is a little bit cryptic. So uh, let's take a little look at this today, and I'll go over the main functionalities of the Nadir. Uh, it's found right in the center of the, the cockpit here, in between the pilot and the gunner. Uh, by default, it's going to be displaying your currently selected waypoint, with a little window down here showing you the current waypoint number. You can press keys on the keypad as long as you're in butt mode, which is waypoint mode, to select a waypoint. The aircraft has a maximum of nine waypoints which can be stored. If you have more than nine in the mission editor, it will only load the first nine, and then subsequent ones you'll need to call up uh, and kind of insert into your uh, system later. Uh, there's no knee board like you would get in certain aircraft, uh, which is going to show you um, your, your current waypoint. So any waypoints above number nine, you'll need to write down yourself and then enter. Uh, I've demonstrated how to enter new waypoints in the takeoff tutorial, tutorial number two. Uh, so if you want to be able to do that, refer back to that video. But what I'll do first is I'll, I'll go over the, the basic operation of the system, what the different parameter selections do, and the main modes. So uh, you've got main mode selector here, it's this rotary, and then above it you have the parameter selector. The main modes are a RET for OFF, VL for standby, that's used to align the system and it takes approximately 40 seconds. Again, refer back to tutorial number two for takeoff to see what that looks like. You then have two main operation modes, TER and MER. Uh, TER for operation over the ground, MER for operation over the sea. Uh, really all of the, all that this does is it tunes the Doppler navigation system so that uh, it can more accurately determine your speed over the ground or the water. Um, so you can probably operate it in the wrong mode for any given circumstances, but uh, in the real world you'd be more likely to get some additional drift. Uh, Animo is uh, a failover mode. If you put it into this mode, it disables the Doppler navigation system uh, and only uses the air data computer in order to compute uh, parameters. This will be prone to drift and you will need to manually adjust things like the wind parameters in order for it to remain uh, realistic. Uh, realistic? Accurate. This mode, however, is not simulated in DCS, so you can't actually use it. In fact, I don't even know... Yeah, nothing happens when you select it. And in the last master mode is test. If you put it into test, you're going to see these bits of information. It'll show pan for 10 seconds. If the test successfully completes, pan will disappear. You should see that any moment now. It just did. That uh, tells us the test was successful. The other thing that we can do is if we look at the HSI while we're in test, uh, the wide pointer, which is the nadir pointer, should be pointing to 45 degrees and the distance should be indicating 50 nautical miles. Both indications should be flagged so that you know that you're in test mode and it's not genuine data. You can then put this back to ter and they will return to normal operation. So that's the, the master modes. Next, you have your different parameters. If I move it all the way around to the bottom here, you have vent. Uh, vent is for wind. In wind mode, you get the degrees in heading for the wind at the top, and the bottom window shows the speed in kilometers per hour. You do, uh, actually, I would have thought you'd have the ability to enter values uh, manually, but that's not working. I guess in the real world, if you had it in a Nemo, you would then be able to enter it, but uh, the system actually automatically computes this using the Doppler nav. So under normal operation, you should not have to enter these values, and it would seem that in DCS, uh, entering the values is not simulated in any case. Uh, next, you have CM deck. That's for magnetic declination. What that's going to do is it's going to display your magnetic heading in the top window in degrees, and it's going to display magnetic declination for your current location on the Earth. Um, so yeah, we're currently 5.13 degrees declination, and 197 is our current heading. 
pop it up one more mode up, and we have VS Dare, and that's Ground Speed and Deviation. Now, that's not going to do very much when we're on the ground and not moving as we are just now, uh, but yeah, top window is Ground Speed in kilometers per hour, Deviation in degrees is shown below, so basically how much we're slipping. Uh, TPS Cap, or Temps Cap, that's going to show us time and heading. So uh, for the currently selected waypoint, which right now I think is waypoint 1, it's telling us that we would fly a heading of 109er and that the time to arrive is 999999 minutes, but that's because we're not moving. So not too surprising there. PP is present position. This will always display your current position. Uh, you've got the option of the normal lat long uh, with a digital kind of display, with decimal, sorry. And if you press Geo UTM, it will show uh, your UTM position. And the down arrow would normally allow you to display uh, the, the current zone that you're in. For some reason, this is displaying really weird figures, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But anyway, that would normally flip between the two. And then the last parameter is but, and that's for waypoints. Uh, so if I choose waypoint number one, its information is displayed, and whenever you're in but mode, uh, selecting a waypoint also drives the needle. So you'll note that uh, as I select different waypoints, the needle and the distance are moving. Uh, let's try that Geo UTM button again here. Yeah, that's a more correct display. Okay, so you're, you're normally gonna get up to six um, digits for the north and the east, and if we go down arrow, we get the current UTM zone. We're in zone 36. Uh, and then we've got these coordinates. That's a more correct display. I don't know why present position wasn't working. And then Geo UTM to flip back to the more common lat long. Uh, you then also have um, the ability to directly select a waypoint when you're not in butt mode. So in butt mode, as I said, it's just driven by the keypad, but if we're displaying present position or any of the other modes, uh, you can't simply hit the keypad. That will not work. You have to first select destination. So I could press, while I'm in the wind mode, I could press destination 2, and I've now just changed to waypoint 2. If I do, oh, I have to press enter as well, actually. There, sorry, that was, I didn't show you the whole procedure. And if I want to go back to waypoint 1, it's destination 1, enter, and you'll see that drives the system. So you don't have to be in waypoint mode, but if you're not in waypoint mode, you must first select destination. Uh, whenever you're in any of, a mo any of the modes, especially modes where you're entering data, by the way, EFF is your, your backspace, um, and if, if you want to completely exit out of editing something, you can long press it for more than two seconds, and it will exit the edit mode. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. So if I wanted to edit waypoint one, I can go enter, and we're in the editing mode. If I do a long press, it absolutely... Oh, it did work. Right, okay. <laughs> I was about to complain that it didn't work. It doesn't do anything until you release. So you have to hold it for more than two seconds and then let go, and it will take you out of that mode without having made any change at all. Then we have the auxiliary modes. Now, most of the auxiliary modes are not really implemented, but we can we can try them out. If I press AUX, uh, and the first one that's really properly simulated is number two. This does the VX and VY test of the Doppler nav system. Uh, a good test means that we should get in the X window a value of 217 plus or minus 13. And in the Y, we should get a value of 47 plus or minus nine. Given that we got these results here, we're happy, all of this looks correct. I wonder, is it the long press of the EFF the way to get out of this again? Yes, it is. That's how you get out of the, out of the AUX modes as well. AUX number three will give us our current ground speed in kilometers per hour, generated from the Doppler nav system. Again, long press, release. Oh, didn't do it long enough. There, takes us back out. Uh, AUX number four will give us our current pitch and roll in degrees. So top window is pitch, bottom window is roll. I don't really know what you would use that for, maybe just to confirm the system is working correctly. Uh, again, long press of EFF takes us out. Uh, aux number five is gonna give us the full visual test of the panel. It will light up every single element of the display that allows you to confirm that everything works. Again, long press of EFF and release takes us back. Uh, then also we have AUX 6, that enters a deviation mode. So basically what it does is it takes a temporary position fix from the moment we pressed number 6, and it will then measure in meters our X and Y deviation from that point. Um, 
Again, I'm not exactly sure what you would use this for. It sounds kind of like a test mode, uh, but it, it will allow you to confirm the system is correctly working. Pressing 7 will exit from that mode. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to measure your distance from a point, you could do that. Um, yep, so th those are all the aux modes. Uh, I see um, is the map indicator button. That is not simulated. It doesn't do anything. Paul is for polar mode, and I actually have a bonus video just about polar mode. So uh, please refer to that bonus video for how polar mode works. And then the last thing is the ability to copy waypoints. So you'll note that I've got I've got waypoints one and two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are all just my present position. That's what the system does if you didn't have waypoints with those numbers in the mission editor. So let's say that I want to copy waypoint one to waypoint nine. I want to make a copy of it. I can simply select waypoint number one. I can press gel, which is copy. I can then select where I want to put it, which is number 9, and then I can press Enter. And you'll now note that we have waypoint 9 selected, and it has exactly the same coordinates as 1. We can flip between these two, and they are the same. That's quite handy, so that's me made a copy of waypoint 1. We also have the option to copy our present position into any given waypoint. So let's say... Uh, this isn't going to work so well, because... Uh, you, you, of course, the helicopter hasn't moved. But anyway, take my word on it. Uh, we can actually copy present position into number eight. Um, so you'll see that these two are now different. Uh, number eight, let's make it present position. So I'm going to select number one. Put your parameters into present position. You will then have displayed your present position. We can press gel to copy that into memory. We can then go to but for waypoints. We can select waypoint eight. We can press enter, and we've now copied the present position into waypoint 8. Actually, it might be even better if I copied it over waypoint 9, because then you'd see the coordinates change. Let's do that. That way you can confirm that um, it's actually doing what I say it does. So, present position, copy, waypoints, 9, enter. There you go. You saw that that changed. So, gel will always store the current position in basically the clipboard, effectively in memory, and you can then paste it somewhere else. That's all the basic functionality of the Nadir. Uh, I hope you found that useful. It's uh, quite a useful little tool. You can do quite a lot of fun stuff with it, especially in co a combination with the polar modes uh, and the the uh, periscope camera system. Because of course, with the periscope camera, you could derive a distance and an angle, and you could then use that to generate sets of coordinates, which is very handy indeed. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, not that many people who watch my videos are subscribed, so please consider it. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew for a small monthly fee. Thank you very much, those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on screen now. There are various benefits. I'm actually just about to set up a Discord server in which uh, Deep Hack's Ground Crew members members will be able to join, uh, and I'm also running little flying sessions with Deepak's ground crew members as well. So it's a very, very small monthly fee. If you'd like to support me and to get those little benefits, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.